whenever I need some answers, God, I turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through to know that you're chasing. Welcome to Story Lab. Today, we're taking a look at a story that's all about what you choose to fill your mind with. Let's go. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. All month, we're talking about ways that we can grow in wisdom. Just like Jesus did. Sometimes that means changing the way you see things. Like this. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, what you up to there? Playing a little tennis. Very impressive, but... But I had you there for a moment, right? Pretty straightforward illusion. But super fun. Hey, you want to try another illusion? Illustriously? Yes. Let's, Let's make it. it! Today, we're going to create magic sand. It's cool. You'll just need some clean sand and some water repellent spray like this. It's super easy. Just spread out the sand like this. And then you'll shake the board. Then cover all the sand with 
the water repellent spray. Oh, that's an arm workout. You try. You may have to shift all the sand around and spray it again, just to make sure it all gets covered. Oh yeah. That's it? No lights, no drama? Well, you can say something dramatic if you want. Please! My mom said that's the magic word. Come on. Huh. I think we lost Nemo again. <laughs> this is where we can see the magic sand in action. It takes a few coats of spray and a good bit of drying time before the magic sand is ready. So, I made some in advance. Check it out. Cool. So here, we have wet sand. That's some wet sand. And here, not so much. It's not mixing in with the water. Nope. The repellent spray has waterproofed the sand. That means the sand can be in the water, but the water will never be in the sand. Oh. Look. Whoa! <laughs> How? The chemicals in the spray are hydrophobic. Hydro is Latin for water, and phobic means fear. Hydrophobic sand avoids or fears the water. Let's try different colors. I'm going to build the world's first underwater sand castle. Three, two, one. Huh? Whoa! That's crazy! Or maybe not. <laughs> it's in the water, but not mixing in. Speaking of which, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in Romans. The book of Romans is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the believers in Rome. From an early age, Paul, or Saul, had studied the scriptures and followed every single rule. Paul believed the new Jesus followers were completely wrong and must be stopped. Then, Paul met Jesus and everything changed. Paul became one of Jesus' most enthusiastic followers and started many new churches. Paul wrote letters to these churches and other believers to help them understand who Jesus is and how he wants us to live. One of Paul's most famous letters was written to the Jesus followers in Rome. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Jen. In the book of Romans, Paul dives deep. Today, we're gonna to take a look at something he wrote in chapter 12, verse two. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you'll be able to test what God wants for you. And you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Okay, let's take that in some smaller bites. Don't live the way this world lives. See, we see and hear a lot of messages every day about what's important, from TV shows, to music, to YouTube ads. Some of those things are totally fine, but not everything we see or hear is good or true, and it can be easy to get confused. Lots of people think you can only be happy if you get lots of nice stuff. And if you're super popular and successful and important, but what God says about you is completely different. God says that you are deeply loved no matter what you do and that you are created for a purpose. God says that you were made to love God and love others and that chasing after stuff and popularity can never bring you lasting joy. But when you hear so many different things every day, it can be hard to remember the things that God says are true. Paul wrote, let your way of thinking be completely changed. Let's be real. 
changing the way you think is hard. I mean, the average person has about 60,000 thoughts every day. That means you're thinking a new thought almost every second. I'm having like five thoughts about that right now. Anyway, controlling all those thoughts feels kind of impossible, but there's hope. Paul wrote that God can help you to completely change the way you think. The best place to start is simply to ask God. God, you know I get stuck focusing on the wrong things. Please, help me change the way I think. Your brain is so used to your old thoughts that it's stuck in a rut. But you can give your mind new things to think about. First of all, you can memorize God's word. When you focus on the truth about God from scripture, God can bring those verses to mind when you need them most. You can also focus on the right things. Whenever you can, choose stories, shows, music, and activities that point you to what is right and beautiful in this world. And three, you can talk with trusted people, grown-ups and friends who follow Jesus. They can help you see how what you're facing fits into God's story. Changing those 60,000 thoughts is not gonna happen overnight, but as you continue to practice and ask God for help, your focus will start to shift. Then, as Paul wrote, you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew that as your way of thinking changes, everything changes. When you are faced with tough situations, you'll start to see more quickly how you can love God and love others. You'll begin to grow in wisdom as you discover what you should do and then do it. The end. 60,000 thoughts every day? Who knew? No wonder it feels so busy in my head. Yep, and it's all those thoughts that turn into our actions. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Wise choices start with wise thinking. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. That's right. And one of those things we should do is pay attention to our thoughts. Just because a thought pops into your head doesn't mean that it's true. Like, if I got a bad grade on my math test, I'm a total failure. That's a total lie, because God says that we are deeply loved, no matter what we do. Exactly. You can make a habit of thinking about your thoughts and asking if they are true. And you could spend time feeding your brain good things too. Like memorizing God's word. And choosing stories, shows, games, and music that help you focus on what's right and good with the world God created. Those are great suggestions. And when you are struggling with difficult or anxious thoughts, it's important to talk with a trusted grown-up who can help point you to what's true. All of these things will help to change your way of thinking. It's like how healthy food grows a healthy body. Healthy thoughts grows wise actions. You got it. The very most important way to keep growing in wisdom is to ask God for it. When you follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to live with you and guide you. It's like that verse in James. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. I think I need to start asking about 60,000 times a day. <laughs> God will be right there to hear you every single time. See you later. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing, never, Stop growing in wisdom. Also, never get too old for sandcastles. Ketchup and mustard. <laughs> Let's see what the blue looks like. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, see you next time. time.